at the end of the day, it's, it was a life decision, um, personal choice, and, uh, and I made it. It's about choosing what's best for you. You think I want to give up my livelihood because of a mandate, because I don't have accommodations, because I'm unvaccinated? Come on. I believe strongly in bodily autonomy and the ability to make choices for your body, not to have to acquiesce to some woke culture. As an athlete, you're like in the top 1% of like human physiology. Can you get a little arrogant thinking like, this isn't gonna hurt me, so why should I take the chance of taking a vaccine? As an athlete, you do feel like you're invincible. You do feel a little bit arrogant and above it all, but I'm, I'm here to tell them and other public health experts will tell you that uh, it can happen to you this false sense of invincibility isn't just a U.S. thing. 16% of Premier League players weren't vaccinated as of December. And the world's number one men's tennis player, Novak Djokovic, has refused to be vaccinated, leading to a global media fest. He was deported from Australia before the Open and became basically the face of the global anti-vax movement. But it's not like he's a COVID denier. He and his wife even own an 80% stake in a Danish company supposedly looking for a COVID cure. It's easy to kind of dismiss some of these athletes as like, oh, these are just dumb jocks. But to give them the benefit of the doubt, these are curious people who are trying to make the best decisions for themselves and are landing at a place that ultimately is pretty bad for public health. What I do believe is that there's a misunderstanding on their end. Complementary alternative medical therapies and other treatments uh, should be a complement to the hard, evidence-based, proven scientific therapies. Plus, as an athlete, let's not forget that you do take supplements, you take pain relievers, you subject yourself to a lot of wear and tear on your joints, ligaments, your bones. I do think that these medical teams that are trying to think about uh, the sports science, trying to think about the nuances of the game to provide that edge, that all these edges are important to livelihoods and important to businesses, important to families. My medical team advised me that the danger I'd be in to get of an adverse event was greater than the risk of getting COVID and recovering. So I made a decision that was an investment of my body. What does a medical team like that look like? And would a medical team that is trained in medicine really advise against taking a vaccine? I have suspicion that the political ideologies or his own sort of thinking and his own ethos, personal ethos, has led him to find individuals who have like thinking to what he already believes. This sort of just further supports into a place of maybe conspiracy, misinformation, conjectures that are not fact-based. When people just say, oh, just get the jab, just get the jab. Well, um, first of all, everybody's body is different, number one. And second of all, there's a lot of things we don't know about this. All of that's incredibly dangerous, especially when you're someone like Aaron Rodgers, who has a city like Green Bay, a state like Wisconsin, a country like the U.S. and the world looking at him and all of his moves. He's In a very- way, are you saying it's like if you don't have a vaccine, it's like suiting up and not putting on your helmet, but putting on your shin guards instead? You're right. Put it, getting a vaccine, doing these preventative things to help uh, keep you safe and your family safe is putting on the vital and essential equipment. What are the conversations that are happening in locker rooms about this kind of stuff? Like if an Aaron Rodgers walks into the locker room and you know that he's been out there being like, I'm not going to take the vaccine and I'm being persecuted for it. How do you manage that in the locker room? The NFL locker room is an interesting place. It's a weird dynamic. Based on where you were drafted, how much money you received and your value to the team, is is how much you're allowed to get away with. They often don't check the big dog who makes the money or who leads the team or who's the face of the franchise. But if you're a six round pick like I was, second string safety playing special teams, you know, it, you're less likely to be vocal about what he's doing. And, and the people we're talking about are big dogs as you're talking, right? Like there's Aaron Rodgers, he's an MVP candidate. Novak Djokovic is the number one tennis player in the world. Kyrie Irving is a beautiful basketball player. I love the way he plays basketball. These are top dogs, so they can kind of get away with it in some senses then. No question. They can. They can do as they want. They can move as they want. They have the flexibility of the team. You know, you have the Brooklyn Nets who have bent multiple different ways, almost like contortions and twisting themselves up. I'm not sure if they know how they look right now based on how many concessions they have given to Kyrie. I'm sort of uh, struck by how, like, professional athletes and pro sports have actually bracketed the pandemic. Like early on, the NBA canceled their season back in March 2020. And now we're kind of at this like late stage 
fingers crossed, of the pandemic. And it, it still seems like professional athletes are kind of driving some of the, of the narrative about where we're at and what the pandemic means in that way. It shows the reverence of sports, not only in the United States, but around the world, how much these players are admired. You're not just performing for your team, but you also now, with the social media age, have a social platform to spread true information, factual information, get us over this pandemic, use some of your social capital to affect the change in lives of people who look up to you. And unfortunately, some athletes haven't done that, uh, and, and I hope that it changes. 